Hi everyone, it's Dale from Bits of Nature. I thought I'd take a moment to show you some of the thoughts I've had behind some of the pieces of work that I put together. Give you some tips. Here's one that is my, one of my earlier works. Just some simple daisies. Little composition tip. Use odd numbers of flowers. It makes it more pleasing to the eye. What was unique about this one that you may not notice immediately is daisies are actually an upright flower. The stem is straight down from the base of the flower. So in order to capture this, I actually had to cut the stem off and, and then turn it so that the flower could face the flat platen of the scanner surface. A little trick to make it uh, work. Maybe, maybe faking it out a little bit, but it got the job done. This piece, which I call Lily Kaleidoscope, was another bit of an accident. It's actually won several awards. What was a mistake about it is I was trying to scan direct on, face on with the daylilies, and it just wasn't working. The scanner has a very shallow depth of field, and they were just turning into a muddled mess deep into the recesses of the picture. So what I did is I got out a sharp razor blade, cut the flowers in half, and laid them out on the scanner surface, and took the image that way. And it just kind of made a very pleasing arrangement with the shadows and the colors fading into the distance. Now one thing to keep in mind with daylilies is they have a lot, a lot of pollen on them. So be very careful when cutting and arranging on the surface to make sure you don't get any pollen or it'll ruin your shot, or at the very least you have many, many hours in Photoshop trying to clean it up. Another different thing you can do is zooming in really close. What is this? Well, it's a maple leaf, a sugar maple, but just a very, very close scan at extremely high resolution. Normally I scan at around 1200 dpi, which allows for printing really large prints. This one I think I did at least 24 or even, even higher. And this is a low resolution copy of that, only 400 bits per inch as opposed to the 2400. But you can see, you can zoom into the individual cells and see how the veins are on the leaf. And it makes you appreciate how a orange or red leaf actually the whole range of colors. Here's an example of another fall collage. What's different about this is what was interesting, this year just had very highly colored leaves for some reason. The way the weather was, the way the fall arose with the, uh, the frosty nights, it just made it a beautiful year. And what I thought was kind of neat is this this one turned over was more interesting than on the front. So take a look at your plant material from all sides to see what's appropriate. This one I call tapestry. It was some ornamental grasses growing in our front yard. It just was kind of an pleasing approach to make the patterns and waving arrangements of the grasses as they just curled their tips. And of course the different maroons and greens were kind of interesting. So just another, another way of exploring different patterns and arrangements of the materials that you can collect. Normally when I do my scans it's in the evening. I've collected materials late in the day, make sure they're ready, and then when the lights are all off at night I scan the, the flowers. But a morning glory is obviously something that is only out in the morning. And so for these I had to arrange a card table and then make the uh, arrangement on the scanner surface underneath the card table, cover it all up with a uh, blank, uh, with a uh, dark sheet, and I was able to keep the scans inside there that way. Just a colorful arrangement of flowers uh, that was very pleasing. Another thing you can do is try to actually grow material that is suitable for the scanning. Now my scanner is an 8 by 11 scanner, so iris, which you find right here, is a very large plant. They can grow several feet tall and have a large, beautiful, showy, frothy uh, blossom on it. Well, this is a little miniature iris. It grows no more than six or seven inches high. This is an azalea flower next to it. And again, it works very well in this composition with some bleeding hearts. Whereas if I had gotten its big cousins, they would have taken up the entire surface of the scanner and wouldn't allow it to me to present these other flowers. In looking at your compositions, a lot of times as the colors uh, can be very different depending on how your skin reacts to them. Mine seems to work really well with uh, the yellows and reds, but the darker purples can be very hard to capture effectively. I haven't you know, worked a lot at adjusting the color tones because I really don't want to. I want to just capture the natural colors. But these pask flowers, some dried seed heads, and a little bit of the uh, azaleas seem to work very well together with their color scheme. Now sometimes you don't have to arrange any particular pattern. Sometimes just the flowers by themselves really work. And again, the yellows and golds and reds just really seem to pop on my scanner. Um, and I just love this one, how the curls in the petals just gives a tremendous depth of field. And if you never looked in real close to a, 
a sunflower, you realize just what lovely patterns all the different blossom heads that are starting to burst open uh, can make inside that scanner. Also, don't always just go for flowers and, and look at the different stages of the plant life. Here are some fiddlehead ferns, obviously very, very early in the spring. One of the daffodils, which are obviously some of the earliest flowers we have, pop out. I found them to be easier, or sorry, to be more pleasing to the eye to have the little curls instead of even the open fronds. Now, one thing to bear in mind with uh, ferns is they are very hairy. So you can see I had to edit around all of these at very, very high resolution to uh, make sure I you know, had it nice and clean and dark around the edges. This one took a lot of time. This was probably, oh, oh uh, 25 to 30 hours to edit that at high resolution. When you are in high resolution on those images, one thing you may find is some hitchhikers. This is an extreme close-up of a tiny, tiny little floret. And sure enough, there was a little bug, a little fly caught on here. The different colors means he was actually moving while the scanner was scanning across the surface. It captures the different colors, red, green, blue, in uh, three different uh, scanning surface elements and so had this different colors on the bug as he was going along. You th may think you've brushed and blown away and shaken off any critters but there are little tiny mites that show up in surprising places. Sometimes I find that less is more. Here's one I just call bashful. Two Gerber daisies and again as you'll notice they stand up straight on their stems so presenting the front of the flower which by, are quite beautiful was just kind of boring all by itself so I actually lay them down on their sides and uh, there's this little peak of orange coming across the front I thought was kind of cute just a little hint of the orange coming through. One of the things you'll see when you do uh, with your uh, scanning sometimes start with just the simplest thing just a flower or two from your collection and then add to it as you go. What you What's harder to do is to take a whole bunch of flowers arrange them on the surface and then subtract, take things away, because it may damage the other flowers are there, you'll get um, moisture or dust or pollen on the platen, on the surface of your scanner, and make it very difficult to edit. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed some of the thoughts behind the art here, and uh, happy scanning!